Hemophilia is a X-linked genetic disorder in which blood doesn't clot and bleed longer. Hemophilia is caused by a dysfunctional or absent blood clotting protein. Without this protein, stable clots do not form quickly over wounds. Weak clots are form, but they are easily dislodged. To understand this, first we need to understand details of clotting. The clotting process starts after the wall of the blood vessel is breached. The vessel constricts to reduce blood flow, and the platelets assemble at the damaged site. Though the platelets stop the bleeding at this stage, they are easily dislodged, and the bleeding can resume. As the platelets arrive, molecules released from the damaged vessel activate clotting factor 12. Factor 12 then activates another clotting protein, the factor 11. By closely fitting into the IT, like lock key mechanism, once factor 11 is activated, it activates the next molecule, factor 9, with the same lock and key mechanism. This initiates a cascade of reactions that ends when the last molecule, thrombin is activated. Activated thrombin then snips small pieces off another protein called fibrinogen. When lots of fibrinogen is cut, the prune molecules cover the platelets and stabilize the clot. To form a stable clot, all the molecules in the cascade must be present and properly shaped. There are two main types of hemophilia, hemophilia A and hemophilia B, which are further divided into moderate to severe types. Hemophilia A Mild or moderate hemophilia A in the mild or moderate hemophilia A, factor 8, is present but has a slightly dysfunctional shape that sometimes doesn't fit into the next molecule. Because the mutated factor 8 succeeds in activating factor 10 so the people with mild or moderate hemophilia A do not bleed as long when injured and only rarely, or never, bleed spontaneously. People with mild hemophilia A have mutated factor 8 proteins. This is due to a small mutation in their factor 8 gene, located on X chromosome. The gene's code carries the instructions for building the protein, so a minor change in the instructions causes a minor change in the shape of the protein. Severe Hemophilia A In people with severe hemophilia A, factor 8 is usually absent, and the clotting cascade comes to a complete halt. Factor activity is less than 1% of normal. People with severe hemophilia A bleed spontaneously and can bleed for days after minor injuries. In people with severe hemophilia A, factor 8 is not present, because their gene contains a much bigger mutation, like an inversion, that completely garbles the instruction for protein. No factor 8 can be produced from garbled gene. Hemophilia B Mild or moderate hemophilia B. If factor 8 is normal, but the person still has hemophilia, the change in factor 9 is usually the culprit. The disorder is called hemophilia B. In a mild or moderate hemophilia B, a small mutation in the gene leads to a slightly dysfunctional factor 9. The protein works occasionally to activate thrombin, and stable clots are eventually formed. Severe hemophilia B. When hemophilia B is severe, a more critical mutation in the gene completely misshapes the factor 9 protein. The protein either cannot activate it or cannot activate next molecule in the cascade. Before effective treatments were developed in late 60s, people with severe hemophilia died young from bleeding. With effective treatment, life expectancy is nearly normal, but repeated bleeding episodes can cause disabling arthritis in the joints. Damage to the joints, mainly knees, elbows and ankles, starts when the synovium, which is a thin lining inside the joint capsule, thickens to absorb blood, lost from the vessels. As the synovium thickens, it also acquires more blood vessels that make the joint prone to further injury. Another injury means more blood to absorb, and the synovium thickens again. With frequent re-injuries, the synovium never shrinks and remains swollen. Enzymes from the swollen synovium, eats away at the cartilage that cushions the ends of the bones in the joint. The longer the synovium stays swollen, 
the more damage occurs, eventually the cartilage is eaten away and the bone begins to grind against bone, causing pain and reducing the joint's range of motion.